Okay, here we go. You ready? Yeah. All right. Ah, greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Across the Table, where the drinks are cold, the mics are hot, and the conversations are fire. Fire. Ah, <laughs> uh, sitting across the table for me. I'll tell you a story about this man. I was working at Chrysler on the phone line. I used to do the, um, the yeah, I used to do the insulation. Yeah, right. This man walked up to me and said, hey, you know somebody named Nard Hayes? Be really? <laughs> like, yeah, I used to know, I used to, me and, yeah. me and Lenard, we all used to grow up out in the country. We right. all went to high school together. So I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. he's somewhere in the family tree. I don't know if we related, but he's somewhere in there. Real close with the Clarks. Yeah, real, real, close. real close. Like we all ran together. Right. And ever since that day, this man has greeted me like we related. And I've Definitely. always wanted to thank you for that. Oh, for sure. I always Absolutely, wanted to man. thank you for that. Absolutely. Sitting Hold across up. the table from me, my homie, Cordell J. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. You good? Man, I'm maintaining. Don't stop. Here's to you. Now, normally, when I do these... <laughs> Now, normally when I do these, I supply the bottle, but this man supplied the bottle. Absolutely. It's the first on across the table. Right. First time. All right. Now, go. first things first, I always ask this question. How are you like you as you, not the Jay, the man, right? How are you? I'm equipped. Elaborate. You know I'm, I'm equipped. We go through stuff, right? Um, I feel like I got or God has given me everything I need to overcome it. Not that life is perfect, but life is good. I'm equipped. That's what I started saying. I'm good. I'm equipped. That's 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 the first. I'm equipped. equipped. That's a good one. I'm about got, to start using that. I got everything that. I need, man. That's it. I got everything I need. I'm a, I'm a, I'm about to start using that. Sure. I'm equipped. Sure. I'm equipped. I'm putting that I'm, on a t-shirt. I'm equipped. <laughs> now, let's get straight to it. Let's go. I started this platform because Sorry. I wanted to talk to husbands and I wanted to talk to fathers. Right. Because I want to be a husband and within the covenant of that marriage, I want to be a father. Right. I always said I would never be a baby daddy. Never. That's never happening. You just celebrated two years, right? Or you're yeah, about to celebrate, about to celebrate two, two years. years. Two years married, eight years together. It's a big deal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really big deal. Now, let me ask. Okay. What about her made you say, Hey, I'm about to spend the rest of my life with you. Like what tangible thing or intangible feeling did she give you to make you want to make that choice? Man, you know what? It wasn't just one thing. It was, we was friends, right? Like real life friends. Like it's this, I feel like it's a new wave. Like all oh, my, my spouse is my best friend. My, like we were real life, like best friends. <laughs> like it was nothing sexual. It was nothing but like we work we used to work together like we work a full shift we would stand outside three hours talking right and then go to breakfast and talk for another hour and a half right those be the best go home and get on the phone talk for an hour right and then like you you never run out of stuff to talk about and then it came a point where like you know what i can tell you anything you know what i'm saying like we could talk about whatever you know so eventually like I became consumed with this person, right? So then I'm like, man, I started feeling, what, what happened, I started feeling a disconnect with God, right? I was distracted. So, but <laughs> I started feeling a disconnect with him. So I'm like, man, I need to give up something. I'm gonna go on a seven day fast, right? So I was telling her about, I'm like, yeah, I need to fast. I want to give up some, I want to give something up and, you know, get back in tune, right? I'm going to pray every day. She was like, all right, as long as you're not giving me up. And I got real quiet, Ooh, real quiet, wow. right? Because she was the only thing I felt was taking all of my time and my energy and my focus. 
So I gave her up for seven days. First time I went without talking to her, gave her up for seven days, no texting, no, it was no social media. It was no nothing, no phone calls. Now, see, I sometimes do that. I'll sometimes will disappear for, I like, this is most yeah. last recently. This has been the longest I've been on social media. I can't, I hate it. So it's, yeah, it's, it'll consume you if you let it. Right. So I gave up social media. I gave up drinking, smoking, all of that. Right. You gave up your girl. Yeah. But this was actually before she was my officially my girl. Like we was always together, always talking, always around each other. But yeah, I gave her up, man. I gave her up. And for those seven days that I was gone, like because I never went a day without talking to her in two plus years, you know, like I had left a card for her every day, you know, just encouraging her, you know, along those seven days and flowers and, you know, whatever. So it wasn't like a complete drop. You just no, it was it was a complete drop. But you me. still had you still reached out. No, like like she had call I left cards at her place. Just for her to open up every day and read, hearing from me, but not really hearing from me in real time. You know what I'm saying? But uh yeah, after that, like we was locked, we was together, and then it was it was still four years after that. Before you don't get with anybody. With, unless you see a future with them like you don't stay with anybody unless you see like a real life forever right so the craziest part i was angry at her i, I won't say angry angry is a bad word i like to think i got my emotions in check we were at odds <laughs> when the first time like when god told me like hey marry her oh we we was into it like, and which which is crazy to me because i'm I, I used to be real big on holding grudges real big but it was like just something spoke to me like man marry her like why not right not why not you know but why not y'all been together long enough like what's yeah, the point but i'm so intentional right like it has to make sense to me right almost fearful to make like the run because that's a huge it's a huge commitment we, we talk about a lifetime a lot of the time people think about marriage and they think about the wedding they think about marriage and they think about let's buy a home but if you have this wedding and you can't trust the person who just gave you these vows or if you have a home and you're miserable inside this new home it's not worth it right so i was super careful so it wasn't until god told me to do it that I actually did it. Seven months later, we were engaged. So then we just got married 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, that was. So y'all just decided to get together when the world shut down. Right. Yeah, it, it worked out that way. It seemed like everything tried to keep us from actually going through with it. But it happened. <laughs> it still happened, thankfully. But there yeah, two. We, two years july 4th it'll be two years independence day y'all got married on independence day on a boat with fireworks on every side of us it was dope man man dope. that's some romantic comedy <laughs> shit right there man it was dope man but yeah if i had if that was it was not just one thing it was to answer your original question it was friendship friendship and i'm really big on friendship to where I don't call people my friends. Not a lot. I don't like you got to earn it. Yeah. People use that word way too loosely, way too loosely. But this is my, my friend, my dog, my homie. You know, we laugh like, like brothers, like we fight like brothers and sisters, but then laugh like best friends. Like, but we, we together, like we tackling it together. So that's, that's really what it was. Any kids so far? No, not yet. That's a different lifestyle, but it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's coming though okay it's coming how do you prep for that because you've already done the intentional thing and got married okay like the next step is obviously procreation i right. mean obviously leaving a legacy that's right. the next step right how do you prep for that like what that this is a part of this is a part of the discussion too because a lot of people don't actually talk about right the next step after marriage they get they get the wedding and then all of a sudden they're together and then an oopsie happens instead of saying okay right. we're married let's plan this shit out heal first elaborate heal first 
what you don't what I'm, I'm we're both really big on is not taking for one being able to protect what it is that you your, your kids right but you don't want to be broken or you don't want to have anger issues you don't want to have you don't want to expose the kids that you want to to things that they'll have to recover from when they become adults you know what i'm saying like heal take your time and be intentional like if you say you want kids prepare for it right put some money to the side like you know be be smart that's it so so right now during this process like it hasn't been an easy process but heal make sure your mental is together because it's again when you think about having a baby you're thinking about just the baby right we talking about the rest of your life you're a parent <laughs> right? like it's it's not just a couple years and you thinking about you know holding this little kid we talking about for the rest of our lives we want to make sure that this person's okay and you're attached to her through the child for the rest of your life too Forever. and that's something else that nobody talks about yeah you understand what i'm saying yeah, so i know exactly what you're saying you brought up healing what steps did you take to get that process started self-examination prayer right self-examination being real with yourself you know having real conversations with your significant other about what we can do better and be willing to be better at it to do better at it like i used to be real big on holding grudges bro <laughs> like i'm not gonna lie like you i feel like you did me wrong not even wrong but you offended me i don't need it like if you cross <laughs> me it's a wrap yeah you know but that's that's not healthy like I can't have a kid. And I feel like, oh, you peed on yourself? I'm out. I can't. Right, you can't I'm do not, that. Yeah, you know. So address the things that's not healthy. You know, that's that's with you and within you too. Like if you're arguing a lot or something like that, and we've thankfully we've never had to go through that. You know, having um, you've never had the big blowout. Like no, we get, don't get me wrong. Like we have arguments and stuff like that, but they've become more of discussions. Than anything one thing about me i will ignore you before i'm arguing with you right now we can have a discussion <laughs> True but, that. I, but i'm not about to yell listen if i gotta raise my voice get out the way right i'd rather leave first i just don't i don't feel it. it's too much energy man we all have that temper though it's too much it's too much energy so i just leave it alone we can wait until a cooler time and we can have a discussion Say where you coming from. I can say where I'm coming from. And we just do it like that. I'm not arguing if I, you know, not doing it. I feel you. I'm not doing it. That sounds picture perfect. You find you were best friends. You disconnected for a while, but the divine creator brought y'all back together. And next thing you know, y'all moving on with life. Moving on. Yeah. That from that moment. Dope. Thank you. Like, cause you really don't hear about that a lot. Right. I'm single with no kids. So I'm in this shark infested pool of dating. Uh, sheesh in Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good women out here. I don't want to create the narrative that it's not. No. It really I, and, and I know it, man. There are so many phenomenal women in this city. It is. But I kind of feel like well, I'm not going to say I feel like I think based off my observation that a lot of them are terrified because they're they don't know what it's like to trust a man with everything. How did you get your wife to trust you with everything? Listen, that's a good question. That is the perfect question, because after that fast that we did apart from each other, they came. I was so comfortable, like I, I would go to work and then I would try to come back and tell you like, man, so-and-so tried to talk to me today, da 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 and it made her upset, right? So it's like what I demanded, I, I won't even say demanded, that's, that's a powerful word, where I drew my line, like you don't have a reason not to trust me, okay? So until you can trust me naturally, we not moving forward. And you have to, you have to hold that standard for yourself or else it'll follow you into your relationship. 
If you can't trust me for me to come and tell you that so-and-so did this, right? You don't have to trust them if you trust me. Come and talk to me when you got your trust issues together. And we didn't move forward until after that. We don't have those problems whatsoever at all. But you got to be willing to, you got to require it, which is, a, it's a powerful word. You got to require what it is that you feel like you deserve. If I've never done anything to you, I don't deserve your distrust. And that's the big issue in the dating pool. Yeah. A lot of us are paying for the sins of our fathers. Yeah. And I yeah. can't stick that. Listen, man. And I'm going to go on record. I ain't going. I'm going to go on record and I'm going to say this right now. I don't want any part of this fight that y'all are having. <laughs> I don't want any part of it. Don't Stop it. trying to invite me on your little panels. Stop trying to get me to talk about this shit. I don't want to talk about it because do it. all y'all are doing is arguing and nobody's coming to a goddamn solution. We're not arguing all 2022. All 2022. All not even just 2022, just all life. <laughs> so we're not arguing. Like this shit is stupid and it's a waste of energy. So stop asking. <laughs> you got that shit right. Right. Yeah. Trust issues was a big thing. It was a really big thing. It takes, but let me ask this question. Okay. Because I ask this question to all of the husbands that come on the channel too. Okay. What's it like being a husband? What is it like being a husband? And I have a follow-up question once you're done. It is the, the most, it takes everything you have, everything, but it is the single most rewarding title. It can be the single most rewarding title that you can hold. And when I say use, it takes everything that you have to, if your goal is to make your significant other happy, whatever you have, use it to make it, happy, make them happy. Okay. So to break it down, if I sing, I'll sing to you to show you that I love you. Okay. I will, if I have it, I will buy you what I know makes you happy. You know, if you're sick, I will take care of you if I need to. Okay. But um, it's also you get the same thing or more in return. So it's the, it requires the most being a husband, but it is, it can be the most rewarding title that you'll ever hope. For real. The most rewarding title. It can be. Wow. It can be given if you're given to the right person. Yeah. It can be the single most rewarding title you'll ever hold. I'm glad you said that because I honest, I truly believe that the dynamic that we have with each other, man, the men and the women, right. we're scared of each other. A lot of times. yeah. Like the men are afraid to trust the women because they think that based off of what mainstream media is telling them that they're going to play this part. And then once they get sick of them, they're going to take them for everything that they got. Right. The women are afraid of the men because like I said earlier, the women don't know what it's like to trust a man right. all the way. All and the when way. you married from the information that I've gathered from the married men that I have on this panel, you in it all the way, all the way. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm glad you said that now. Let me ask a follow-up question. Okay. What does facilitating the role of husband look like? Like, what is that? Like, at base level, what does facilitating the role of husband look like? Mm, facilitating the role of husband. I think it's your basic... What the basic thing that you require from from really anybody is where it starts. I would say, I gotta trust you, and I gotta be trustworthy. Okay, um, communication is like the biggest one of the biggest. Trust the communication is like hand in hand, you know. So, and comprehension. 
Thank you. <laughs> and comprehension, Thank you. right? Because I can talk talking, to you till you're blue in the face, but if, if you don't, don't get what I'm saying, yeah. I'm just talking, you know? So I need to be able to communicate. I need to be able to express my feelings. I need to feel like it's a safe space to express my feelings. That's huge, especially with black men. But um, I, that's, that's really it, you know? Um, nothing, whatever you require for yourself, you know, if you were a single man to be, to feel as a good man, you take it into being a husband, a good husband and a good man is two completely different things. Right. Break that completely down. Completely Different things. Cause I'm, I'm a good man. Um, whether I have a wife or not. Okay. Um, the way I treat others, the way I carry myself, the, you know, my, my integrity is intact. You know what I'm saying? And I take all of these things into a marriage and now I'm a good husband, you know, keeping those things in place. But whether I'm with her or not, I'm still a good man. So. Yeah, so I hope I answered your question. I think that's. Or do you want to be more specific? I guess what I'm asking is. I'm guessing I'm asking on the provision side of it. Okay. Because I'm no I'm starting to notice this trend too. A lot of the men aren't in the position to provide that kind of provision for a woman. And a lot of the women out here are not looking for provision as far as take care of me. They're really looking for attack dogs that they can sick on somebody that'll, you know what I'm saying, when they wrong. And they know they wrong. And there's right. a lot of dudes out there that'll protect, quote unquote, these women, even when they wrong. How do you differentiate and how do you break that down? Being a protector. Being a protector, a provider. That's the main thing that they all say that they want. Protect, provide, the simple, the basic cliche stuff. What they want and what they deserve is two different things. Too. Ooh. That's heavy. That might be a different conversation, but you got to be worth whatever it is you're asking for. And I think it's super important. I, I was just having this conversation at work. It's super important, right? When you're pursuing anybody, whether it's man, woman, woman, man, to ask yourself, am I the person that this person, that this person needs or wants, however you want to put it? Am I that person? You know, like, do I have what it takes to become or to do I have what it takes? Am I that person that he needs or she needs? Like everybody says they want this and they want that. That don't mean you deserve it. Like, how do you want a God for your man? You don't even pray. <laughs> you know, what do you you want a man to communicate but you but you shut down 12 years ago from, from Tommy, he did some stuff to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's heal. Please heal. That might be a different conversation, but. <laughs> Real. I hear that a lot. Heal. I think we kind of touched on it earlier, but. I guess what I want to ask is in the healing process, was it a you and her thing or was it a you solo thing? And then you came back and then you came to her and then y'all came together and healed together. And then y'all pressed on with life. Um, I think your significant other is always going to take some of the weight. Always. If you trust them enough to tell them your trauma, your, your things that you may have encountered in your upbringing or whatever it is, they're going to take some of that weight and hopefully help you through it anyway. You know, but the job is yours. It's nobody else's job to heal you. Okay. Now, as a good spouse, you do what you can. You can be patient. You can be encouraging. But it's the job is yours to heal. The job is yours to identify what it is that you need to heal that's detrimental to your relationship, that's detrimental to your mental state, whatever it is. It's your job to heal. But it's the reward is not only yours, though. Once you heal, everybody around you will see it. Everybody around you will reap the benefits of it too. Straight up. So 
It's not about you per se. It's more like at base level, it's about me. But once I'm good, everybody else is good. Is yeah. that what I'm getting from this? Yeah. Like you can't tell me once I heal, my wife won't benefit from it. Once I heal, my kids won't benefit from it. Once I heal, my, my siblings, you know, won't benefit from it. The people that I'm in direct contact with, you can't tell me that that's that you won't, that they won't see it. That they won't love you even more for it. So heal it. Heal. Be intentional about it, too. I'm sorry. Be intentional about it, too. <laughs> I went over this way a little bit, but. I needed you to repeat that. Yeah. Be intentional, man. I, that, listen, anybody that knows me, be intentional. I always say any conversation, be intentional. About whatever it is. You say you want to do it. Be intentional. That's another shirt. You got that shit right. That's a, <laughs> that's a whole nother shirt. Let's shift gears for a minute. Okay. Because I told you we was going to talk about this before you yeah, sat down. Yeah, you did say that. Yes, I did. You, you, you have a talent, sir. I heard your background vocals on quite possibly one of the best masterpieces out of this city that I've heard that, in a long time. That's big, man. Thank you. That's huge. Where did that come from? Because I <laughs> never knew you had that. Man, a lot of people don't know I have that until what's crazy. I, I didn't really even start singing publicly other than church until I got with my wife. So she brought that out of you. She made me want to use it to make her happy. I'll, I'll say that. I haven't sang this much in uh, a long time. But uh, no, yeah, man, I've been doing that forever. To me, I sing all the time to me. <laughs> it's all the time to me. But what was it like working on that project? Because I know, shout out to Shan Dig, by the way. Shandig. You need to call me jackass. <laughs> um, what was it like? Work that project was huge, and I'm that glad you liked it, man. Bruh, th there were so many pieces on that album and so many things that people could relate to even right. that song he did when he was talking about healing is a right. song that people could recognize and people could say damn he might have a point point." and what was it like working on that project bro it was i don't like working in the studio i, I know i knew you was gonna react like that i hate it because it's the studio process is to me is is so artificial, right? Like I, I have to go in there, um, I'm gonna get behind the mic and I need to to sing this a certain way, and then I need to redo it, you know, to make sure it's, you know, what what is required, right? I say it's artificial. It's not really uh, artificial. Might be a bad word, but. To me, it's not natural. Like me just getting together with somebody or me just singing. You know how I want to sing it. And however it comes out, it just comes out. But um, I don't. I hate the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Shan, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I hate. They. He know. He know this though. He know. I hate the studio. I hate it. I hate it. I'll go and listen to somebody else all day long. But me working in the studio, I hate it. That's how I am too. Like I, I had B wheels on. And then I had my man Tyrone on who did the insurance. Yeah, and yeah. Tyrone slipped up and told B. Wills that I had bars. Bars. But yeah. that was so long ago. And B. Wills hit me up and was like, Yeah, you need to get back in the booth. So holla at me when you're ready. Did you hit him uh, up? No, because I'm not ready. What makes you not ready? I know you're interviewing me, but what makes you not ready? <laughs> <laughs> since we talking where the conversations are fire let's talk right <laughs> let's talk scott free I, wow mr miracle scott you're damn right yeah. um i think the thing with me is that when I'm focused on one thing, it's difficult for me to deviate. Like okay. I know I can sit down at a table, you send me an instrumental or I just have something in my head and I can pen a slick verse. But this is what I wanna do. 
You understand okay. what I'm saying? This is what you're more passionate about? Yeah, I'm more passionate about talking to the fellas because one, I kind of want to get rid of the whole black men don't want to marry. That's the, not totally not true. I want to get rid of that. Completely false. Like I, I legit want to get rid of that. But I also want to know what it takes because right. like I said, I want to get married and I want to have kids one day. Right. So I would rather focus on life and then I always looked at I always looked at hip hop as a hobby. Okay. Like this isn't a hobby. This is something that's necessary. Right. You understand right. what I'm saying? Men need to sit down and have these conversations with other men. Right. And other men need to hear these conversations Absolutely. so that way they know that marriage ain't what the mainstream media tries to make it out to be. It don't have to be. Exactly. It, be. it don't have to be that. Right. So I guess that's I guess that's where I'm at with it. Maybe one day I'll crack open the notebook and pen something and then hit hit him up and say, Hey, let's do it. Man, but, listen, you mentioned writing to an instrumental. Like I was just talking to, to my dude Tony about this. I cannot do it. I <laughs> I cannot sit down at an instrumental and lyrics just come. I've only did it one time. Shan with um it's a song we had comfortable and I wrote my whole verse, right? First time, only time it's ever happened. Other than that, I create songs from from the ground, man. I create lyrics and got to put music to them. But see, it's different with singing than it is with hip hop. Probably. Because with Probably singing, right. you have to kind of go from the ground up because yeah. you have to you have to first sing the song then you have to figure out what tunes you want to go go into it then you have to figure out how you want the melody to flow with those yep. tunes and so on and so forth right right with hip-hop you give me an instrumental and tell me what you want the subject matter is about and you just i get the go. flow yeah i get the flow of the instrumental and then i'm pinning it right so i guess that's kind of different and that's another thing just until recently i had the worst case of writer's block i couldn't write for nothing Sometime it lasts years. <laughs> Sometime it lasts for years. Like mine has been ongoing. Like I, 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 I'll get back into it when I'm done with my research, because okay. like I said, this is more important, and this is a more important conversation, right? Because, like I said, grown men having grown men conversations it's, is um, a necessity nowadays. It's imperative. You understand what I'm saying? Sure, yeah. So that's kind of, and we went off. We oh, we all off topic. But it's, are. it's all right though. <laughs> it's all no, right. you you good you good though? Because I'm 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 glad you asked because now it's out there and now the people can understand why I haven't really been out there. Right. Like, and plus, okay. music is trash nowadays, bro. It's so trash. It all sound the same to me. Most of it. Like to me, but there aren't really a lot of MCs out there. Period. Right. Let alone MCs that can actually put together an actual song that I can listen to all the way through. Or real singers. Or <laughs> no, no shade. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, somebody had to say it. Oh no! But uh, real singers, they be out here fraudulent. Man, what? I don't know. I have <laughs> Some people should only sing in a church. Ooh. I shouldn't say that. We going off topic. <laughs> Let me reel it in. That's <laughs> that whole, you know, the lady in the audience. Take your time. Man. You know, take your time. That part. But uh no, it's good to try. Everybody got something to give. I'll leave that there. <laughs> I'll leave that there. Well, all right. No. You got good. that shit right. Last question. All right, man. And I always do I do this with everybody. And now 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 that it's out there and you got you got a talent that people should know about. I gotta know. Give me your top five singers. Are we going male or female? Either pick your poison and you get two honorable mentions. You can go male or female or male and female. God. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just do I'm gonna do female first. But say it doesn't have to be in order. Okay, don't the, have to be in order. Don't have to be in order. Female, I think it's easier. 
Okay, I'm going Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Jasmine Sullivan, Kiki Wyatt, and that fifth one is always a doozy. Um, let's go, Brandy. Ooh, let's let's just let's throw her in there this time. Top five. Males. No particular order. I'm going Luther, Vandross, Stevie Wonder. You got to. Uh, I'm going D'Angelo. D'Angelo. I feel like people don't give him the real credit for real. I feel like they don't really give him credit. But As a composer. Oh my god. Oh, him and uh Rafael Sadiq. Bruh. But yeah. <laughs> Luther, Stevie, D'Angelo. Um, God, I don't know. Two more, two more males. Tank, maybe. No, I'm gonna go with Marvin Gaye. Got to just because that's my guy. We best friends. It's Marvin. Yeah, we. <laughs> it's, it's Marvin. I gotta go with Marvin. And number five, I'm gonna throw in uh, who who do you got? Who you got left? Like singers, singers. I will throw Tank in there. Why not? Only because of his ability. I know what he can do. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I feel, no, you know what? No, no, no. I'm taking that back. I'm going Zacardi Cortez. Zacardi Cortez, he mostly sings gospel, but the boy is a dog. Look him up. Zacardi Cortez. He's my number five. All right. And that's pretty much. I, I Listen, listen. I appreciate you coming on over oh, here for sure, man. on a damn near 100 degree day. 100 degrees. The conversations is fire, man. The mics <laughs> are hot. And so is outside. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so it's outside. <laughs> hot as hell out here. Uh, uh, I no, appreciate was, you coming through. Man, for sure, man. It was good being I, here. I man. appreciate you bringing Ciroc passion, an passion. exotic blend of the tropics. Yeah. Well, all right. It's a new release. Sarah, get at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the plug. Nice plug, man. Uh, once again, this has been your episode of Across the Table, where the drinks are cold, the mics are hot, and the conversations are fire. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that. Your support would be greatly appreciated. Definitely. Until, oh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. Shannon, once again, asshole, yeah. you need to call me. It's <laughs> my boy. Yeah, that's that's my man's. But I appreciate you coming through, yeah, for man. Sure, man, I come back anytime, man. I feel like we can sit here and talk about this stuff all day, but we gotta, you know, cut it down just a little bit. So, bro, when I get when I start live streaming, yeah. Oh, you're gonna be here for sure. Man. Oh, you're going to be here. I come in whenever, man. You're going to be here once I figure whenever. out. Once I figure out. <laughs> once I figure that out, you gonna be here. Man, I come back anytime, bro. Ah, anytime. that has been your episode. Until next time. In a minute. All right, y'all. Ah, that was fun.